Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today we're going to cover basic electricity. And I'm going to have a series of videos where you can go to my website, paulstoolbox.com, and look up each one and find out more and more about electricity. Not that you're going to do it yourself. I'm not telling you to do it yourself. I'm telling you, you really want to know how electricity works in your home in case you ever have a problem. I know a lot of electricians that are very good friends of mine and they're very honest. But you do have those fly-by-night guys who will come in here and tell you you have a major problem and you don't. So you really want to know how to check this yourself. I'm going to start off with this outlet. If I had this type of outlet, I would never use the back end right here. I would only take and put it on the screw. I would take this, bend it, and loop it around my screw and tighten it. When you do that, you want to have this bent in a clockwise manner. So when you put it on there and you're turning your screw in clockwise, it keeps it tight instead of pushing it away. This is why I don't like to use these. Let's take a white wire where you can see it. You take this and you push it in and it locks in place. But if you were to take and pull this and wiggle it around, you could actually work it out of a outlet, which is not good at all because that means this can loosen up over time when this electricity comes on and off, it start, it'll expand a little bit and contract. And when that happens enough times, this will loosen up and you could have a short in your wall. Now, to remove these, you would take a simple little flathead screwdriver like this and you put it right in that slot and it'll slide right out. Or you pull it and it comes out. I'll show you another one. I'll push this one in here. If it doesn't just slide out, once you push that in, you can pull it out. This is the kind that I would highly recommend, or this. They work basically the same way. You have holes here, but it's a little clamp in there. It's like a vise. So when you screw this uh, screw on the side tight, it pulls it and it clamps it in there really well. Then you can snug it down real tight. You don't have to worry about it loosening up. That's why these are definitely better than the other type when you're working with that. This tool right here you will plug into your wall and it will tell you if you have any problems and what the problem is. If you have no power at all, right here is what you'll see, nothing, zero. None of these lights will come on. If the center light comes on, you have an open ground. If this right one comes on, you have an open neutral. And I'll go into that in a little while. Let's go ahead and get started on this. A few tools that will really come in handy are some type of wire strippers. You can get these fancier ones like this that automatically strip when you put your wire in. It pulls it out. This right here will tell you if you have electricity in a wire or on the end of a plug. If you don't have any electricity, it's not going to light up. So we'll turn this off. And, of course, I think you need a good pair of lineman pliers. These are excellent. You want to have a good pair. Don't get a cheap pair of these because it really does make a difference when you're working. I always make sure all of my screws are tightened in all the way so they don't touch anything, especially if you have an old metal box. Those old metal boxes or commercial boxes are metal, and if that's sticking out and it moves a little bit, it touches that, it's going to short. With code on most places, you have to have at least six inches um, sticking out from the box. From this point to this point has to be at least six inches. Now, code is different in different places, and you may want to check in your area. This is not up to code, of course. I have an extension cord, or I made a little cord and hooked to it. On your newer outlets, the small slot is going to be your hot. This is going to be your neutral, the larger one. And, of course, that's your ground. Now, one way to, to know exactly what you have is your hot is going to be on the opposite side as your ground. They don't want these two wires touching each other at any time. So your ground wire is going to be on the same side as your neutral wires. Now, your, your hot wire is going to be brass colored, and your neutral wire is going to be silver, or they call it white. Okay? Now, if I have wires coming in and out, I try to separate them in the box, and I'll take my two wires that are coming in, or whatever, either way, vice versa, would be fine too. But I take two of the wires and I make sure I put them right across from each other, the ones that work together. So I have my hot and my uh, neutral. Same here. These two are going out. So I will take and put one in my hot. Keep it really tight. Like I said, you don't want 
you do not want that copper showing too too much in there okay so we'll take this one and trim it back just a little bit I want to have it as tight as I can in there but you don't really have any exposed wires that way you don't touch it by accident we'll tighten that up you make sure that the screw is loose when you shove them in the slots like this if that's the type you're going to use and then you get it really snug on there now this one's going to line up here same way make sure it's loose it's Okay, now let's get to the ground wire. The ground wire, I like to use a pigtail on it. So I'll cut a little piece of ground wire and I'll loop it in here and twist all of them together and then hook that one wire onto my nut right here. Because you don't want to have all these wires on there, it's too hard to, to tighten it up. Another good way of doing it is by using something like this. This is a push-in clip and they're fantastic. You can get these for maybe a dollar fifty to two dollars for ten of them so they work great. They keep everything in order. So I can take this, push it till it goes all the way through and I see the copper come all the way through here and then I'll put this one in the next slot. You have four slots on this one. This is a four four port um, connector. So right here, I'll take this one, lock that in. Then all I have to do is bend this. Of course, I'm bending it to where it will go clockwise onto my screw. And uh, remember, ground down, that's what I like to do. You can do it whatever way you want, but that's the common way and you want to keep everything the same. So it's easy to remember if you think ground down, you'll get them all the same. I use a torque gun or a, or a drill when I'm tightening these up because I cheat a little bit. I always use a hand screwdriver whenever I'm working with the face plate or the, the sides over here. I never use a torque gun on that because you can crack them and ruin it. But it really comes in handy with this. If you go to buy a house, you want to have a tool like this with you so you can check your outlets yourself. That's what an inspector uses and it works great. We're going to take this and plug it into here. And this is about a $10 tool, so it's really inexpensive. You can get it at just about any hardware store. Now I have my Romex wire with the ground hooked up. If I take this and hook it into my regular plug with the ground, you'll see my two lights lighting up right here. That's showing you that everything's working properly. This plug doesn't have a ground. And look, it tells me that I have an open ground. I disconnected the neutral side. So now, we're going to take and put this in so we can check it and make sure we don't touch anything. We're going to plug this into the wall. You see how it's lighting up on the very end that's telling me that I have an open neutral if I take that neutral wire and carefully touch it on here everything lights up right I take it off you see what happens this video is to give you a basic understanding of how electricity works my very next video I'm gonna have is gonna show you how to actually use this in your home I have a problem in one of my walls I have a short and we're going to find out what it is. I'm going to show you how to track it down. Real simple, guys. Nothing hard about this. Just make sure when you're messing with electricity or you're doing anything with electricity that you're very, very careful. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos and my future electrical videos. And if you found this useful, hit like. I don't know about you, but I don't like to carry 15 different screwdrivers around when I can use one Mega Pro. This screwdriver has 14 different attachments in the back and a quarter inch nut driver in the front. Comes with a lifetime warranty. You don't even have to worry about losing your bits because they stay neatly tucked inside. And this spins without coming loose. Made in the USA, Megapro.net.